I, I don't know about you, I, I, the Jillian in my life is right in here. Anybody else? Yeah, the Jillian in my life resides in my own brain, telling me I am a loser, making me deal with my own stuff, and it can be such a, a hard thing to do. But I tell you guys, when we see this, and we see that I, there's a few phrases in here when I watch this that I, that I so want to share with you on a spiritual level. One of the first things is when she looks at the first gal and she says, you have the knowledge and you have the ability. And then she said, you just need to make a choice. I want to add one more thing to that. Um, You have the knowledge and you have the ability. And I bet you too that you have the desire. And you still have to make a choice. And this is part of what I, what I want to share with you today. I was thinking, uh, for me, like Tom Landry, you know, which I think would be a much better coach, potentially, but he made this a great phrase that, I, that I, I live by with God many times. A good coach is one who makes you do what you don't want to do so that you'll become who you want to be. A good coach makes you do what you don't want to do so that you'll become who you want to be. And I just want to tell you guys, I, one of the, I, when I was talking to Susie about this this morning, um, one of the things that you realize in here is there's something that, you, that I think, again, why the show is so inspiring is there's a determination. There, there's, a, there's something inside of them where all of a sudden you say, I am going to be able, I'm going to do this. And my guess would be that in your life, you've had certain times in your life where you had knowledge and you had the ability and you were so fighting whether you were actually going to do it or not. And sometimes you've given up and you've said no and you've walked outside the door and you've sat on the steps. And other times you've turned around and you've came back in. And I, I just want to say that one of the things that hit me this morning was the ability to determine, the ability to have the strength of making a choice no matter what you think and no matter what you feel, I believe is the glory of what it means to be human. When God said, I'm going to create us, I'm going to create you, us, human beings, in our image, He said, I'm going to create you in our image. I think one of the things that God did, he said, I'm going to give you the freedom to be able to choose. See, because you can't love without that freedom to choose. And I just want to encourage you today. You know, you guys came in here, and and, and you know what? I know you have some knowledge. Um, You know, we're we're learning some stuff here. Um, I I don't know all of you. Maybe that's your first time in church. I don't know. But there's some knowledge. My guess would be that most of you came in here with at least some sort of desire you know, to, to meet God or, or to kind of work on your life or to do something uh, spiritual, you, there's a desire or you probably wouldn't be here. Um, and you also, I, I just want to make sure you understand this, you have the ability to choose. You really do. And God gave you that. And it's a glorious thing. I think that's why when we see other humans rise up to the challenge and fight through it and make it. There's something inside of us that goes, yes! There's some, we we, we want to see that happen because we want to see it happen in our own life. And so, the, what is the life that you want to live? And what I want to talk to you about today as well is what is the life that God wants you to live? And Jillian, another question that she had, which was a great one, is this. Are you ready to step into a new life and write a new story? Are you ready to do that? And um, I, I just want to tell you, man, I know people walked out of the first service in this place completely different than how they walked in. I know it was a little brash when she says, hey, here's the deal. You could lose a little weight off your butt or you can change your life, your decision. And I, I, can I tell you this, you guys? Sometimes I think we, we want a little taste of religion, you know? Maybe this will help me with my marriage, or, or maybe this will help me with my finances, or maybe it'll make me feel better, or, or what. And all of that is, is, is true. But what I want to ask you is, do you want just a little bit of a change, or do you want a new life? And, the, and, the, and the, what's wild is it, the answer is in your card. You actually get to make that choice of which one you want to have. Now, we're in a series right now. And it's called The Only Thing That Counts. And so, and what is the only thing that counts? The, right from the Bible, it says it's faith in God, which is expressed through love. The only thing that counts. I mean, there's a ton of stuff in this Bible. But when you narrow it all down to its core, all God's saying is, trust me, believe in me, and show it by your love. Guy comes up to Jesus, 
says, Jesus, what's the most important thing? And Jesus responds, the most important thing is that you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all of your strength. And you guys, this is what I want to talk to you about today. And I, I do, man, I, I told the first services too, I just want to let you know, this is one of those days where if I don't make it home, and I go home, <laughs> to know that I had a chance to share with you what I'm going to share with you today. I really do. I was looking at my notes all week long, and I'm just thinking, this, I believe, is the most important thing that I can share with you today. So how do you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? How do I have the strength of character to determine and to move forward? So you guys, because really that's what a will is. I looked up the definition. It's the power or strength to make a decision. It's the determination to do something. It begins with intention, but it moves into the decision of the will. And as a human being, do you know what you do all day long? That. That's what you do all day long. You make choices all day long. You determine how you're going to live your life. And we, we don't even, we're not even conscious of it, but we're just constantly making decisions. But what I want to talk to you about today is what happens when we get to this place where it says, now love God with all that strength. So here's a, here's a question. What's it mean to love God? If you were again, and, and you, know, don't, you can just think about it in your head. If I, here's the question to you. What does it mean to love God? How do you do that? Come up with your own answer inside your head. You're going to say, how many of you actually, how many of you love God? Just real quick. Okay, you're in church, so you had to raise your hand, I know. So, <laughs> um, but uh, it just, you know, just throw that up there. But if, you, if you, but if you really mean it, you say, I love God, how do you do that? Okay? Can I tell you how Jesus said it? Because that's probably the right answer. Um, John 14, 15, he says this. If you love me, If you love me, then obey what I command. There you go. How do I love God? You do what he says. <laughs> That's how you show him that you love him. Okay? And then later in the, in the, in the passage, John 14, 31, I have been grabbing this verse, uh, I would say in the last few months, I'm just, I find myself going back to it over and over and again for my own life. And Jesus said this. He goes, the world must learn that I love the Father, and I do exactly what he commands me. So in other words, what Jesus is saying is, you and me, <laughs> we got to learn one thing, and we must learn this, that Jesus loved the Father. And how did he show the Father he loved him? He goes, I did exactly what he commanded me to do. All right, this is where the tension lies, right here. This is where the battle rages. Because I bet you any money, again, that some of you are in here and you have knowledge about what it means to love God. Some of us in here, we have desire. We desire to love God. We even have the ability to love God, and yet we don't love God. <laughs> Anybody relate to that? Just your pastor. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so anyway, so here's the deal. But here's where the tension lies, you guys, and this is a great verse. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, tells us why we struggle with this. He goes, for the sinful nature desires, there it is, I have a desire, and my sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. I love this verse. I love it because it help, helps me to know that God understands what it is to be human. Because <laughs> is this not true, you guys? So what he's basically saying is, all of us have this sinful nature, every single one of us. It's bent away from God. We want to do our own thing. We all have that. And so it's in contrast to what the Spirit desires. And so basically what happens then <clears throat> is whenever God rises up within you, right, and you decide to do what God wants you to do, what does your flesh do? It goes, are you kidding me? You ain't doing that. That is the most stupid, idiotic thing to do. I mean, you will hear that. I don't know. I hear that inside my head all the time. When I want to rise up and do what God wants me to do, my flesh does not want to do it. Can anybody relate? 
Okay, now, when you choose, if you're a follower of God, when you choose, because your flesh is rising up, and says, oh, I want this, and you're like, you're right, I want that. And so then you go after that. What does your spirit do? Oh, man, why are you doing that? Do you have any idea what that's going to do to our life if you do that? See, no matter which way you go, what happens? You do what you don't want to do. <laughs> I follow God, my flesh goes, Ugh. I follow my flesh, my spirit goes, Ugh. I mean, that's human right there. And all of us have that inside of us. So when it comes up and Jesus says, here's the most important thing for you. you got to love God with all your heart and soul and mind and your strength. Your flesh goes, uh-uh, I don't want to do that. So let's, let me just give you a few examples. Uh, how many of you were here two weeks ago when we, you guys all gave up your cards and you came forward? How many of you were here in that service? Okay, quite a few. I just, I went through those cards and um, I'm not through with them because that was a lot of them. But I, I just praying, I'm praying for each one. I, I want to know, I want to pray for you on each one of your deals. Because um, I don't know who you are because you didn't write your names, which is fine. But I, and I also been tallying them up. And so let me just go through a few of these, how this works for us. The number one issue in this church two weeks ago in our service was sexual sin, All right? So you sit there and you, you go, okay, I have knowledge. I know that God doesn't want me being involved in anything sexual that's not outside of marriage. Um, in fact, I even desire that. I, I, I really wish that I could honor God and, and do what's right. Um, I want to do that. I have the ability to say no. And what do I do? click on the button and watch the porn, right? Hop in bed with the person, even though they're not your spouse, saying that this will be the last time. I'm, this is last time. See, you have knowledge. I know I shouldn't do this. You have desire. I really don't want to do this. And what do you do? You do it. Okay, I won't ask you if anybody relates on that because that'd be a little too personal. Their second one that came up two weeks ago was issues with money, with materialism and giving. And you guys put in this box and you said, man, God, I know I'm not loving you with all my heart because financially I'm just, you know, and I, I know what you want me to do. I know you want me to give back to you. Um, I even would love to give back to you. But man, every time my paycheck comes, I don't give back to you. <laughs> I know that I'm getting caught up in the materialistic stuff of this nation and my debt is ridiculous and I can't stop buying more stuff. I know it's not good. I don't want to do it, and I can't stop. Anybody relate here? Okay, don't nod. All right, third one, and this was so interesting that this one came up. The most, third most popular thing that you guys put in the box. I don't think you'd ever guess this one. I didn't. You know what it was? Anger. Anger. A lot of you came up here and you said, you know what, I... I'm not loving God with all my heart because I'm, I'm bitter and I cannot forgive and I'm really angry. And so you sit there and you go, okay, I know Jesus says forgive as I've been forgiven. I would love to forgive this person. Can't do it. See, it's so weird how we can have knowledge and how we can have desire and yet we still don't follow through. Do you guys understand? Do you guys follow me here? There's something deeper that we need, and it's strength in our will. And I'm telling you, once we find that, everything can begin to change. And so here, you guys, I just want to tell you right now, I want to pray for you. Because if we're ever going to love God, if we're ever going to love him with all of our being, if we're ever going to be able to get past knowing and desiring and actually get to the point where we're doing it, then we're going to need apparently a strength and a power that most of the time we don't possess. And if we can find that out today, and I'm going to try to share that with you as clearly as I can through Scripture, this is why I'm telling you, this message today could be the most important thing that some of you need to hear that literally will change your life. I just want to throw one more in here. Some of you are beginning to gain knowledge about what it is to know God. You're desiring God, and yet you still can't make the choice to surrender to God. You need strength. You need power in your spirit. 
I, I refuse to believe that there's not a soul in this room that doesn't want to live the life, the absolute, complete, and full life that God created you to live. And in Jesus Christ, you can do it. But you're going to need more than what you've got. And that's what I want to share with you today. So would you pray with me? And I'm telling you, man, here's the deal. Right now, just like we opened up with a song to say, I'm ready now, God, I want, you, I want to pray and I want to give you the chance to, again, just in your own heart, in your own privacy between you and him, to open up your heart and say, I'm ready, God. For whatever you have for me, give me what I don't have so I can live the life you created me to live. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for everybody in this room. I, I just, I know you love them. I know you know all of us. You know me. You know every one of us in this room. You know where we're weak. You know where we need strength. You know, God, where we desire right things and we even know what right things are and yet we haven't been able to make the choice with the strength of our will. And I just want to ask God in this hour together, would you make this so much more than just a church gathering, a religious service? I want to pray in the name of Jesus that for every heart right now that's opening itself up to you, that you would just come and do in us what we can't do for ourselves. Every one of us, God, accomplish your will in our life. And I pray for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So where are we going to start? Here we go. Um, I want to share with you one of the greatest stories in all the Bible that shows us <clears throat> how we can actually love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength because there's only one person who ever walked this planet and did it, okay? And that's Jesus. And the best illustration of this is in Matthew chapter 26, right near the end of his life. Let me read you the story. Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. See, so guys, one of the things we need to remember about Jesus is did Jesus ever struggle to do what the Father wanted him to do? Man, if you've ever thought, man, it was easy for him. He was God. No, it was not easy for him. In fact, if you go in Luke, who was a doctor at the time, he says he was under so much stress in this garden that sweat like drops of blood were actually coming down his face. Now, I know I get stressed. Anybody else get stressed? Anybody had blood drop down your face? See, I haven't ever got that stressed. So Jesus was in this moment, you guys, and he's saying, I got to tell you, right now, what the Father is asking me to do is so unbelievably unbearable. I need you guys to even help me and pray for me. See, this is really good news. In Hebrews, when it says, you guys, we don't have a high priest who's unable to sympathize with us. We have one who's been tempted in every way not to do what God wants him to do. And yet he never failed. He always said yes to God. But he struggled to do it. So if you're here this morning and you're struggling to say yes to God, Jesus understands what that's like. Let's go on with the story. Going a little far, farther, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Which means if there's any other way to save the world, I'm up for it. <laughs> I, this one I don't like. And here's the classic line, Yet not as I will but as you will. See, Jesus had a will. You have a will. You have the strength to make a decision. You make decisions every day. You determine how you're going to live your life every day. Jesus, too, had a will, and he could determine how he was going to live his life. 
And when he was so stressed out, he goes, God, if there's any other way, I am begging you. But if there's not, here's Christ in all his glory. Not my will, but yours be done. You guys, have you ever said that? Have you ever gotten to the place where you've said, not my will, but yours be done? See, our tendency as human beings is to say, no, I kind of like my will. <laughs> In fact, I got some pretty good plans. Jesus, you want to see them? Would you sign off on those? You know? Because this would be great. I mean, I mean, I'd make more money and I'd have a better house and I'd, but, you know, I'd get married and it'd be great. We have all this will. And see, what we struggle to believe is that God has a will that's actually better than ours. We think we're better than God. And I'm going to get into that later. Let's keep going. He turned with his disciples and he found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Oh man, how many times you hear that? Why? Because it's true. The Spirit's willing. I want this. Your body's weak. I don't want this. So what are you going to do? Do you have the strength to follow the Spirit and do what God wants you to do? Or is your strength in your will? And do you do what you want to do? He went away a second time and he prayed, My Father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were tired and heavy. So he left them, and he went away once more, and he prayed the third time, saying the same thing. I just, I love this scripture. I love how it just says Jesus was serious on this one. He's like, God, please, goes back. Are you guys helping me here? No, great. All right, second time, please, God, if there's any other way. And if you're sitting here this morning, I, I I just know that some of you today, No, you have knowledge of what God's asking you to do with your life. You may even desire to do it. And you haven't found the strength to say, your will be done. How are you going to find it? You guys, I really only know one way. I can't wait. There's two things I want to share with you. The first one is this. If you and I are ever going to live the life that says yes to God and no to ourself, we need the one inside us who says yes to God and no to himself. You and I need Jesus Christ in our lives. He is the strength. He is the power I've always wondered why when people think about Christianity, they're like, you know, when the, some people will bag Christianity because they want to find something more spiritual. I'm telling you, that's because the church has screwed it up because there is nothing more spiritual than being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, which is what he says I'll do for you. You guys, we, we got to figure this part out. Does God have a will? Yes, he does. You know what his will is? He, one, in one place, he says, my will is that nobody would perish, but that everybody would, would repent. Well, you know what repent is? It's the chick sitting outside on the steps, coming back through the door and saying, turning around and saying, okay, I'm coming in. And what did she say it was like to do that? What was her word? Excruciating. We'll get to that one too. But you guys, God has a will. And you know what his will is? God's will is, I want to help you. I want to be in you. I want to be so intimate with you that I would actually take residence inside your heart. You're a spiritual being, and I am spirit, and I'm, I want to be in you. And if I could get in you, I could strengthen you to say yes to the things that are actually life. You guys, I, I'm telling you, there is no, it's hard enough for me as it is to say yes to God on a regular basis, I can't even fathom if I didn't have Jesus inside me helping me to do it. And if you need strength to say yes to God and to love him with all your strength, then the first thing that happens is you got to receive Christ into your life. John 1, 12 says, to those who believe, to those who receive him, he gives the right to become a child of God, born of his spirit. 
So there's two things you need to receive. And for some of you today, this is your challenge. This is your decision today. And you're going to have enough knowledge. <laughs> and you have the ability. And some of you desire God. And I'm going to tell you right now, you could make the decision today to get him in your life so he can help you live the life you were created to live. There's two things you got to receive. The first one is this. Man, when you're in a relationship with somebody and there's enmity and there's dis, you know, dysfunction and there's, in other words, with God, when there's sin in our life, that sin's got to be forgiven. He is a holy God. And the first thing that needs to happen is you need to get reconciled to God. <laughs> you got to have all your junk completely forgiven. And that is why Jesus Christ came. He said, here's the deal. The price for sin, the wages for sin, what you earn through your sin is death. So either you can pay that wage or you can let me pay it for you. And you guys, in Christ, all of your sin, God is saying, I will accept Jesus Christ's death in behalf of yours. Do you want that or do you want to die? It's, I mean, it's your choice. And if you choose Christ, then he says, by your faith in me, all of your sin is forgiven, and you and I can finally now be reconciled. And I want to tell you this right now. There is no opportunity, according to the scriptures, there is no opportunity for the fullness of the Spirit of God inside you until you get your forgiveness, until you get your sins forgiven so that he can take residence inside you. In 2 Corinthians 5, Paul says, I urge you, be reconciled to God. And some of you just need that. You need to receive the gift because it's a gift of salvation, being saved from your sins. And then the second thing you need to receive is him. He said, and again, John 1, 12 just says, to anyone who believes in me, to anyone who receives me. You guys, God wants to dwell in your heart. He wants to live with you every moment of every day to help you to understand what is real and what is true. I like how Jillian said, you've got a story in here and you just can't, it's not real, she said. See, all of us, all of us have stories in here. And what God wants to do is say, let me in there so I can show you the real story. So I can tell you who you really are. So I can set you free from all the stuff that's not helping you to be all that you could be. So you guys, that, that's it for me. And I, I, I just, I want to share with you again. I'm, I'm so sorry for those of you who've been here for a while. I have to bore you with my stories. But I only got one story. So, <laughs> and so, but you have a story. And you guys, again, for me in that moment, I'm 11 years old. And I go to church with my family. My mom and dad were good people and thought church would be a good thing to do. So we went to church. You know, I mean, uh, maybe that's like you guys. We never talked about him at home. He wasn't a topic of conversation at home. And um, so we show up to church one day. And I'm sitting there, just like you are right now. But on that day, God started tugging on my heart. I'm going to get to this in a second. You guys, God, and some of you, he's working in right now. And he's been working on you. He's been drawing you. Jesus said, no one will come to me unless the Father draws him to me. Some of you have been feeling drawn to him. Well, I'm sitting in that dumb little pew in that Methodist church, back right, right around there in the middle. So if you're sitting back there today, you better look out. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm just sitting back there in the middle, and all of a sudden, this guy gives an invitation to receive Christ, to receive the forgiveness for my sin, and for me to receive him into my life. And again, you guys, oh my, my whole heart. I sat in church every day. Nothing ever like this happened. I sat there on this day, and I had the knowledge. I even had the desire, and I knew, I want this. But there was no way I was going up there. <laughs> There's no way. So, you know, I made a deal with God. You ever do that? I made a deal with God and said, if one of my friends goes, I'll go. <laughs> and, I, and I did. I, and I sat there, and I'm looking around at all my friends going, get your butt up there, because i got to get up there. <laughs> and nobody would go. And I remember sitting there, and finally, thank God for Jim Point. I need, to, I need to email this guy someday and say, thank you for going up there. When Jim started walking down the aisle, I found myself standing up in front of the whole church. Hmm. I remember going, excuse me, Dad. That was hard. Excuse me, Mom. 
And then your brothers and sisters, that's really hard. <laughs> but it didn't matter anymore. I knew what I needed to do. I had wanted to do it. And I sat there week after week and I didn't do it. I'm 11 dumb years old. Sorry if you're 11. You're not dumb. <laughs> I'm 11 years old. And I get up and I walk forward. You guys, you know what I did that day? I made a choice. I made a decision with my will to surrender my life to God and to receive him into mine. And I can honestly say this. I've never been the same since. And some of you are sitting here today, and I know that God has been working in your heart. He's wooing you to himself. You know enough. You probably even are desiring him. And I just want to encourage you, today could be the day where you finally get past your head and past your heart to the very soul of who you are. And you say, I want Christ. And if you make that decision with your will today, everything will change. And it doesn't happen until then. But that's where the strength comes. Now, you guys, so, and, and, I, and I loved it too, because, you know, at the end of that thing, right, when she finally came back in the room, and she's back up on the ladder, and she gets done, and Jillian looks at her, and what does she say? You know, she looks at her and goes, so what? She goes, I did it. And she goes, well, was it, was it easy? Or what? No, she goes, and was it hard? And she goes, yes. And she goes, no, it wasn't. She goes, yes. She goes, but it was worth it. You guys, I'm telling you right now, there was nothing more excruciatingly painful than to have to stand up in front of my family and all the church and give my life to God. I don't think there's anything harder to do than to surrender your life to him. I know people will say, oh, you know, religion's for the, the weak and for, it's an opiate for the masses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know what? Yeah, try and surrender your life to God. There is nothing harder and more difficult as a human to do. But when you do it, you'll never be the same. Let me give you a couple verses. You know what happened to me on that day? Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me? What are you doing with the one who loved you and gave himself for you? If you give yourself back, then it says, I, you will no longer, Christ will live in you. This next one is a passage, you guys, I pray for myself all the time. It's in Ephesians chapter three, and it's a prayer. Write this one down. Pray this for yourself. Pray it for those that you love. Because here's what it says. It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Now, again, you guys, I know this is mysterious. And some of you are going, I don't know, what are you talking about? Some of you are going, okay, I think I'm getting this. Even the Bible says this is a mystery. You know what the mystery is, he says? You know what the mystery, the hope of glory the hope of you and I living in heaven, the hope of living a life full of God's glory is a mystery. And the mystery is this, Christ in you. Strengthening you in your heart so that you can make the decision to follow him and to love him. See, that's, so I pray this. I'm like, God, help me today. I pray this almost every day. Strengthen me with power through your Holy Spirit in my inner being so that Christ will dwell in my heart through faith. Because if Christ dwells, Excuse me. If Christ dwells in me, then I have a chance to live the life that God had for me that day. And so do you. Now the last one is this. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. I am so grateful for this passage. See, again, it's God who works in you to will. And I think some of you are sitting here today and God has been working in you. And you know it. And he's getting you to the place where you will will it. And then you will act on it 
according to his good purpose. And can I just tell you, please, I just want to tell you, if God has been working in your life, go for it. Just go for it. Surrender to him today. Get him in there and watch what he'll do. Jesus said, you'll find your life. All right? So that's the first one, you guys. If I'm going to love him with all my strength, I need Jesus in me who does love him and who always says yes to him. And he's the one who helps me to do it, and he can help you too. Now, so let me talk to all of us who've already received Christ. Because we're sitting there going, well, I did that, right? I've got Christ in my life, and I'm telling you, does it get any easier? You know? No. Again, I love at the very end, right? Where she goes, I did it. Was it easy? No. She goes, it was, but it was worth it. And then what's she say? Get back up on it again. See, what, what God says, in fact, in Colossians 2, 6, it says, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. See, when you receive Christ, the journey just begins. And, that, and so now my question, this is why I want to help you. For all of you who are Christ followers in here, and you're going, where's the strength to say yes to God? I need that. I, I just want to share with you a couple things I think can help us. The first one is this. When I was 11, and I made the decision to follow Christ, what I was really doing on that day, you guys, is I died to myself. I said no to myself, and I said yes to God. Look at Romans 12. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, it always starts with God's love and what he has done for you, the one who loved you and came after you. In view of the fact that God so loves you so much, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. What's a living sacrifice? It's a, it's a living dead person. We're supposed to be like zombies, you know, for Jesus. You know, no, but... What, what does it mean to be a living sacrifice? What it is is, every moment I'm alive, I say no to myself and I say yes to God. And every time you do that, you die. And you live. That's a living sacrifice. And then what does he say? Every time you say no to yourself and you say yes to God, it is your spiritual act of worship. This is how you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength is you say no to your will and yes to his. Don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which we talked about last week. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I can't tell you how much I love that passage right there. See, again, this is where we think our will is the best. And if you can just be honest with yourself, you do. Because if you didn't think your will was the best and God's was the best, you'd always say yes to God. <laughs> But instead, we like to say yes to ourselves, forgetting that if we would be a living sacrifice and say no to ourselves, you would say yes to God, and then what would happen? You would find out what God had for your life. You would test it, and you would approve it, and you would go, unbelievable. It is good. It is pleasing. It is perfect and complete and absolutely what I was created to have. And the only way you're going to find that good, pleasing, and perfect will is if you give up yours by being a living sacrifice and saying no to yourself and yes to God. Now, I, I, I know, so as someone who follows Christ, sometimes, you guys, this means making some pretty major decisions in our life. You know, I, I shared in the first, I think I'll share this one again. I have lots of these stories, but um, for me, I, you know, I gave my life to Jesus when I was 11, but then I didn't have anybody to really help me to know, to help my roots get down into it. I'm so grateful for Adventure Canyon here and our youth ministries here, which are helping our youth understand what it is to know the love of God. Because nobody really helped me to understand that. So I wanted God, but I totally didn't live like it at all. <laughs> and for me, it was a four and a half year relationship with a girl that I loved with all my heart. She literally was God to me. And I mean, seriously, I think the best way to explain it, because when I was deciding what to do, it was all based on her. It wasn't based on God. But the problem was, it became clear that she wasn't interested at this point in her life in pursuing God, and I was. And I'm like, what, what are we going to do? And finally, again, you know what God does? Is he comes up and he starts knocking on your heart. I could spend a half hour just sharing with you the way that God worked in me. Because who works in me? God works in you to will. And some of you are followers of Christ, and you are stuck in a situation that you know is not pleasing to God, like I was. 
For some of you, it's sexual stuff. For some of you, it's financial stuff. For some of you, it's your own anger and your bitterness. For some of you, it's the the fact you're not loving your spouse or your kids. For some of you, it's the way you're spending your time. It doesn't matter what it is. You probably know what it is right now. God will work in you, and he'll start to prompt you to say, come on, Nelson. Come on, David, you know this is not loving me. Trust me. I want to tell you what, guys. Long story short, man, I had to end that relationship. It was the worst day of my life. I'm sure all of us, most of us in here, broken up with somebody or been broken up with. I'm telling you, it was, it was, it was my personal hell. I yelled at God the whole way home, 15 minutes. I just said, this better be right. You better take care of her. I was, because I loved her. I literally, the one that I loved more than anything else in the world, I set aside for God. You know what I did on that day? I died. And I'll never forget waking up the next morning. I was so alive. I was free for the first time in years. I felt for the first time, like, oh my gosh, I can be me now. In some of you, there is so much freedom right around the corner, so much glory, so much intimacy with God, and you're stuck, and you need strength to say yes to him and no to yourself today. And the Holy Spirit of God is living inside of you. And if you ask for it, he will strengthen you with power in your inner being so that Christ will dwell in your heart, the one who always says yes to God, and he can give you what you need today to say yes and to get back on the path that he has for you. And you'll live. But you guys, they're not all big. See, this is the other thing. Paul said, I got to die daily. And I love it in the NIV. It goes, dash, I mean it. Because I'm serious, the, the greatest little apostle was the one who said, this, I have to do this every day. So you guys, so how do you strengthen your faith? You know how you do it? It's every single day. It's when you go home and you don't feel like loving your spouse. You don't have to say, I wonder if it's God's will if I think about her more or me more. And it's, you know, it's, not, it's her. It's him. See, and every time that we say yes to ourself, it weakens us. And every time we say no to ourselves and yes to God and you suck it up and you help with the dishes and you talk about your day, even though you have no words left, and you engage in that, your faith strengthens. Every time when you love your kids instead of loving yourself and getting caught up in your own world instead of pouring into them, when you're faithful with your finances, every time you say yes to God with your finances, he strengthens your faith. Every time with your time, you temptation, oh my goodness. When temptation hits, that's when I need his strength. I need it bad, and so do you. And every time you say no to yourself and your flesh, which is trying to destroy your life, and you say yes to God, it strengthens you. You guys, this, it's a, Paul said it's a walk. It's a step by step. You keep in step with the Spirit. And every time you say yes to God, Every time you do, you die to yourself. You uh, worship him by being a living sacrifice. It strengthens you in your inner being. And then when the big one comes, you can say yes to God. And you will find your life. You guys, so... I would just love for you to envision that a little bit because I, I, don't, I don't feel like I need to say a whole lot more. Some of you, you just know the only reason you're sitting here at K2, the church today. The only reason you're here is because for some reason in my heart, I feel like being here. Can I just tell you? The only reason you feel like being here is because God wants you here. It's the only reason. If you're, if you're interested in God all of a sudden, guess why? It's because he's at work in you. And today could be your day to say yes to him and to receive Christ and his forgiveness and his presence in your life. And for all of you Christ followers out there, I got to believe with all my heart that you know what it is where you're saying no to God and yes to yourself right now. And if you could make the choice today to say yes to him, I know a few things are going to happen. 
Your faith will be strengthened. You will be set free. And most importantly, you will engage back with God. And he is your joy. He is our peace. He is our love. He is our strength. He's our hope. He is everything we need. Make the choice. He gave you a will. Exercise it. And you'll find the life. Is it hard? Yes. Excruciating? Yep. And it's worth it. It is so worth it.